What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. Thanks for uh, rocking with me on another video. So in today's episode of I Can't Stick to One Project and I Don't Know Why I'm Like This, uh, as you can see, it's new project time. Finally. Uh, I've been so excited about this day and I don't know why. I mean, it's a new project. That's why I'm excited. But let's... uh. Let's get you a little look-see, huh? I don't like this. I wish they would have just left the AM radio in here, but... Factory controls are still here. All of the knobs are in good shape. And there, let's see. I'm guessing that's 126,000? Well... Sorry, 102,658, but nobody actually knows. I mean, all the doors are just as nice as the last. They have little tiny tears in them. But, man, I tell you, this thing is... Headliner is... Not headlining. Look how nice these seats are, though. This thing is... A 1958 Ford, what I thought was a Fairlane, but doing a little bit of research, I think it's a Custom 300, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, so my mom has had this car since I was a kid, like a little kid. She used to daily drive it. She drove me to school in this thing for years and years, and the... The brake drums got warped really bad, so it it shook real hard when she was stopping, and she parked it. She just, you know, she got something newer, nicer, had AC, and she had a carburetor fire one time because it ran out of gas, and they overfed the carburetor, and it, it backfired through the carburetor, and she had a carburetor fire. So she was kind of scared of it for a while, so she parked it, and it sat for... Man, I don't know, 15, 20 years probably, just in a field, covered up with a, a thin mesh tarp, and I went and picked it up for her in uh, 2020. I had to put a key switch in it because the guts inside the key switch just fell apart. So I put a key switch in it, I got the drums resurfaced, done a couple of stupid things to the engine, and I got it running and driving. I put a half tank of gas through this thing. I, I drove the shit out of it. And I gave it back to her. And I told her it needed tires. And that was pretty much it. She drove it a couple of times. Blew a tire. And parked it again. Then it, you know. It was supposed to go to my sister. But she's. I'm the only person in my family that's into this old shit. So she's not going to do nothing with it. And my mom's tired of it being in her yard. So she told me to come get it because I will do something with it and I will enjoy it. And here we are. Now it's sitting on my trailer with two flat tires. And I can't take it off my trailer until I get my station wagon moved. But that'll be easy, I think. So now, let's let's uh, pop the hoodis and I'll get you guys a little look-see. We'll walk around this car, I'll show you you know, the outside, because you've seen the inside now. I mean, look, it's got, it still has the original visors in it. And this one is in great shape. That one's missing the cloth, but I get the feeling that one's been missing the cloth for a lot of years, because it's not even, even in this car, like it dry rotted and fell off. Like, I think the cloth has been missing most of the time my mom's owned it. Uh, but I'm not for sure. Now, here's under the hood. As far as I can tell, this is a 292. Um, it's got a three-speed automatic in it. That's, uh, you know, it's got manual brakes because power brakes weren't a thing then. But this thing does have power steering. The I have a bad hose down here that I need to replace. That's why there's no belt on it, but it does have factory power steering. Uh, 
other than that, it's it's pretty cut and dry in here. It's incredibly good shape though. I mean, the wiring is still soft and pliable. It's not crystallized or melted anywhere. The uh, well, I guess I should say the bottom of the battery box has a little bit of rot. Let's get you over there. Like I said, it does have a little tiny bit of rust in the bottom of this box, but I'm not worried about that. It's had a few modernizations to it during its lifetime, but they've been for the better, like an alternator instead of a generator. Um, stupid small things like that. Now, it does have some issues that I'm going to have to work out, but I'm not too concerned about them. Get this down. <laughs> Now, let's get to the money shot here. Yes, it's four-door, but I like it that way. I don't like two-door cars anymore. I've grown a real appreciation for sedans. I don't know what happened here, but I need to address this and that little dent right there. It did not affect the hood. This, I'm pretty sure I can just pull back forward, unbolt that beam straighten it out i'll pull the grill out and i don't know do my best to knock all this shit straight again all these and see what i can do about making it hold on to itself again i've got that little bit of rust i got the good old poverty caps on here And as far as I can tell, guys, this is original paint. Um, I ran the uh, the door tag on it. And as far as I can tell, these are original colors. This may be original paint. I'm fairly sure. We got some Bondo over rust here. A little bit right there. But listen... things are solid boys just goofy I don't know no reverse light oh yep no nope I take that back reverse lights are in right there I lied this again same shit on this side a little bit of bondo over some rust but it doesn't look like it's through anywhere. It just looks like they bonded over it to cover it up to paint, uh, sell it. A little bit here. There. That one's a little ugly. That one might actually be a hole. Um, that, I'm not sure how well you guys can see this, but this rocker from right here back has a big ass dent in it. Let's see. There we go. Now we got focused. But overall, I mean, this thing is in incredibly good shape considering it's a 1958. Here. Let me grab the key. And I'll show you my favorite part. Oh, by the way, here is the factory door tag. And I have looked it up. And according to this right here, this is the factory paint on this car. Let's see, watch. How nice that door shuts. Okay, here we go. This is my favorite part. Original carpet. The quarters look great, actually. This is the carpet for the spare tire cover. But I had to change this because this is the tire that blew apart. So I just dropped it back in here. But anyway, we have the factory bumper jack got some more brake light lenses because I remember when I was a kid 
My mom sent me outside to shut the trunk on this thing and I shut it by the tail light and I broke one. You gotta remember this was back in the mid 90s where parts for these things were not readily available. So when she found a place that finally sold these, she bought four of them because there's obviously four on the card. So I've got a couple extras. But this thing is just, it's so good. Like, so good. Let's see this. I mean, God, even the trunk pan looks to be in great shape. I'm not going to pull the carpet all the way out because i got to clean all this shit out. But anyway. Let's get back inside here. Now, I know the base of the front seat is good, but my mom put this on here to keep the wear and tear down because this thing is, like I said, incredibly nice. Like, I feel like this car is probably nicer than I deserve or nicer than something I should have, but she wanted me to have it and she knows I'm going to treat it right and I'm going to do something with it, so it's mine now. My... My basic plan for now is I've got underneath, right now on my trailer, I have a, a little puddle of brake fluid. I'm assuming it's brake fluid. So I need to address why that's leaking. Um, I'm obviously going to flush the fuel system. I think I need to change the sending unit because when you turn the key over, the gas gauge doesn't work. And I don't think it's a grounding issue. I'm pretty sure there's, you know, there's power there. It just, it doesn't, the, the sending unit's probably broke off inside the tank or some stupid shit. I don't know. I have to drop the tank to find that out. So I'm going to get it running again. Because like I said, I did get it running once before. I'm going to get it running again. Um, fix the exhaust. Put a set of tires on it. Uh, I have to, to fix this paint. This, I got to buff this shit. It's driving me crazy. And uh, probably attempt rust repair on this thing not sure that i trust myself to do it but i can't afford to pay somebody else to do it so i'm gonna have to trust myself or learn to something anyway let's see what we have oh shit yeah i love these old tags look at this 24 pounds of air in the front tires 21 pounds of air in the rear tires that's crazy and different oil for different temperatures. I like that shit. Glove box is in good shape. Like the nicety in this car. Hell, even the 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 clock in the dash actually still works. Like the shit in this car that it's just it's incredible considering it's never it's lived most of its life outside underneath a tarp. This car's in incredible shape. Like, I'm I'm so excited to have this featured on the channel. This was the new project I was talking about. Um, going under the carport for the winter. So the truck can wait and, until this thing's running and driving again. Then I'll get back to that one. But for now, this is going to be a really fun project. Okay. Here we are on the door tag. This tells me that this is not a Fairlane. This is a custom 300, according to this tag. Uh, RE2 is torch red and colonial white two-tone. Uh, the trim level is uh, soft gray vinyl interior, which have soft gray vinyl. So... You know, it's a three-speed trans, yada, yada, yada. But anyway, this is what I mean when I say I'm pretty sure it's a custom 300. And it's original paint because it's torch red and colonial white.
sorry about the, the video kind of being all over the place and kind of rambling on a little bit, but I'm just, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this car. Uh, now I have to, as I said, move the wagon out and get this thing off the trailer and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get the video started. We'll start the series on this thing. Thanks for, uh, sticking it out to the end. If you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. And, uh, remember guys, your dreams don't work unless you do. So get outside and tear something apart.